हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन दी गेट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री स्टेटिस्टिक्स टूडे वी विल डिस्कस दी क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी सिक्स टू फिफ्टी इन दिस लेक्चर माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर हरीश कर यू कैन सिंपली फॉलो माई यूट्यूब चैनल वेर यू कैन फाइंड द वेरियस लेक्चर्स एंड स्कैन एंड ज्वाइन माई कोड फॉर द वेरियस डिस्कशन पार्ट वट विल वी फाइंड इन माई यूट्यूब चैनल यू कैन सी देर इज अ प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ द गेट स्टेटिस्टिक्स वेर वी हैव डिस्कस द क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू दिस एग्जाम अप टू दी फोर्टी फाइव इन अवर लास्ट लेक्चर also you can see there is a question related to the py question statistics uh, december 2018 of the csr net as well as the markov chain and complete playlist are there you can also see the complete gate 2022 gate 2019 and many more are available in this series so let's start with this lecture now the first question is this is given to you as a cdf then they are talking about the probability first of all remember the most important thing the relation between this in terms of the cdf first of all i can write here this is f of b minus f of a but here you can see in each of the case the equality is not appear second tips for you whenever is a strictly less than here then you can write still you can write this value as p f b minus f a minus probability at the point x is equal to b fine second tip probability at a single point is zero if x is my continuous random variable fine based on these two tricks i can solve this question within a 15 second period look at that firstly they can talk about the equality they can talk about the equality so whether it is a zero or not if x is continuous now how you can check the continuous you have to check the cdf value at the point a if and the cdf value at the point a negative if both are same then it's a continuous like here what is the f of value is zero at this point is a zero so minus 1 is a continuous point zero it's a 1 by 4 zero It's a three by four. Both are not equal. So it means here x is my discrete random variable. Fine. Now look at that one. If it is a one, it's a four by four one, and according to this, it's a one. So it means there is only one discontinuous point is called as the zero. So now, first of all, if it is a, then how you can find this probability? If it is a continuous, then it is fine. If it is a discrete then how you can find the probability at this point this is f of a minus f of a negative a negative means the limit on the left limit make sure the second uh, sometime the student will think about that like you have to firstly find the probability and then take the limit remember this is not equal to probability x is equal to 0 when you substitute an infinity here firstly find the probability and then you can take the limit fine now look at that what is the answer of this it is f of 0 minus f of 0 negative what is the f of 0 equality appear here so it is 3 by 4 minus 1 over 4 it is 1 over 2 so this answer is cancel now if you think about that this answer is correct we will we will check again so how you can check this answer we will firstly find the probability of this so f of 1 by n minus f of 1 by n negative so what what is the 1 over n 1 over n is always lies where f of 1 by n is lies in this interval so right answer of this is 1 over 4 1 over n plus 3 fine what is the f of 1 by n negative what is the 1 by n negative means just smaller than of this again it lies in this case so the right answer of this is 1 by 4 1 by n plus of 3 so clearly says that it is my zero then you can take the limit again it's a zero so it's a half is not the right answer fine now you can think about this other options so now check about the first option so your target is to check which one is the correct statement so i can write this number as f of by using this rule f of minus 1 by n minus f of 
half plus 1 over n minus probability x is equal to minus 1 over n. So firstly I will find here what is the value of the, this but again by using this rule it will be minus and here minus 1 over n lies in this case. So the answer of this will be 1 over 4 minus 1 over this minus what is the uh, minus 1 over negative again it lies in this case so it will be cancel out so this value will be 0 now you can see minus 1 by n lies in here so it is minus 1 by n plus 1 1 over 4 minus half plus 1 lies again in this case so minus half plus 1 by n plus 1 now take the limit as n approaches infinity. So what is the answer of this? As n approaches infinity, this and it's here. So what is the answer of this? It's a 1 over 8, but he said 5 over 8. So this is cancelled. Only the right option is my B is the correct answer. But how you can verify it? Look at this again. We can do the calculation. I can write this as f of 1 by n and f of minus half minus 1 by n minus probability x is equal to 1 over n. So we already found the probability x is equal to 1 by n is 0. So this is my 0. What is the 1 by n? It lies in this case. So it is 1 by 4. Where this number lies? It can be written as half plus this. So half plus 1 by n lies in this case. But it's a negative. So negative lies in here interval. So the answer is 1 by 4 minus plus 1. Now you can take the limit as n approaches infinity. So what is that? It's a 0. So it's a 3 by 4. It's a 0. It's a half. It's a 1 over 8. So you can see 6 minus 1, 5 over 8 is the correct answer of this problem. So remember always you firstly find the probability and then take the limit as the right answer. Okay, look at this next question. Uh, which of the following statement is true? If x and y are the joint density function such that here x is not equal to y. It means when x is 1, definitely y is not equal to 1. It means both are dependent on each other. But if you look about the last option, they are independent is a cancel out. How you can find the value of c? You can take the double summation. 1 with respect to x, second with respect to y. c over. I can written as 2 raised to power 2, 4 is separate. 2 raised to power x, 2 raised to power y, which is 1. So now, here, x is not equal to y. So how you make the calculation easier? I can simply take, I can add the one pair like c, c over 4 I can take in as outset, and 1 over 2 raised to power x, 1 over 2 minus, I can add the one pair where x is equal to y. Fine, that could be easy. Again, there is the same problem. So now, what? Now the rest is over. That's a simple calculation because they are independent. So you can take it as a separate one over two x. I can return like here, and one over two y. I can return here. Here x is equal to y. So I can return this number as one over two raised to power two y. That's a four raised to power x, where x varies from zero to infinity y x varies from 0 to infinity y varies from here i think now you can easily solve this what is the sum of this can you find the sum of this when from 0 to infinity this is a gp series so the sum of the gp series is a over 1 minus r 1 over half again this is a gp series 1 over half minus c over 4 again this is gp series 1 over 1 by 4 is 1. So what is the right answer of this problem? So it's a 1 by 4. 1 by 4 will be cancelled out. So it is a C. It is my 3 by 4. C by 3 is 1. So what is the answer of this C? So C is my 3 over 2 is the right answer. So 1 over 2 cancel, 1 over 4 cancel. Greater than 1 is the right answer of this problem. So the only trick here is because of this term, you just simply add the one term and subtract the another corresponding term. So that's a very simple calculation. Okay, so here this is an entry that's called as the 
multivariate what is that if i called np mu of this what is that this is nothing but my rank of this rank of this or you can say the dimension of this so if i say rank of the matrix p or rank of if i called a instead of this rank of this here now first of all a simple tips for you the same tips i already given you in the question but 45 which is 46 sorry 41 which is explained in the previous one so if x i is follows the normal distribution with the mean is mu variance is here then x bar will follows the normal distribution again with the mu mu variance is my here fine then you can because we need a x bar minus mu and so on so this term this term can you tell me which term this is nothing but my chi square variate having the degree of freedom p fine now since it is a multivariate distribution so instead of writing this as a square i can return this number in terms of here this is a transpose x bar minus so this inverse i can return this as here and i can multiply this one so this is nothing but my chi square of fine this is a simple tips for you now look at that now they are talking about the f how you can convert the chi square into f if i divided this term by degree of freedom p then it follows the f distribution fine that's simple now look at that so if you look about this here p is my 3 so it means it has this this has the degree of freedom 3 it's a fine also remember if f has the degree of freedom n1 comma n2 what is the degree of freedom of the 1 by f it is n2 comma n1 so you can see if you look about these two terms they are similar but it are just reciprocal so if it is a 3 comma 2 degree of freedom then it is a 2 comma 3 it means if this is my correct then this is my correct if this is my false then this is my false fine but you can see there is only one correct answer so that means which of the following is not true if this is not true then this is also not true but this is only the one correct option so it means this is my correct statement this is my correct statement now look at this second third and fourth part now again what is the tips for you they are vistas distribution order three then you have to look only for the degree of freedom s1 look at the s1 what is the s1 if you think about like of this divided by n minus 1 because it is of the x1 bar what is x1 is consists of the five elements so but here it's a four this is n minus 1 so what is that this is nothing but my unbiased estimators of variance because sigma is my unknown so this is the unbiased estimator of the variance so what is the degree of freedom of this n minus 1 what is the degree of freedom of x s 2 again it's a 4 how many number of the elements 6 to 10 again this is a n minus 1 so degree of freedom is my 4 for the s1 4 for this total degree of freedom is my 8 is my correct statement and this is my false statement so the right answer of this problem is my d is the correct answer so nothing is to be solved you just remember if you remember this formula if you remember this concept you can solve this without any calculation remember so i can see again if you want to solve this in a 10 or 15 second so remember this is the f distribution and the reciprocal of the f they have just interchanged their degree of freedom so they have the interchange degree of freedom so both are my two statements they are talking about the s1 and s2 that degree of freedom of the s1 is 4 degree of freedom of the s2 is 4 so degree of freedom of the s1 plus s2 is my 8 is the correct statement so the only false statement is my d is the correct answer. okay which of the following statement is my countable so whenever there is a question related to the countable you can check about the coordinate fine so look at the first question f is the mapping from 1 2 up to 10 to the set of the rational numbers say q so what is the cardinality of this function so that's the cardinality of q and cardinality of this it's a 10 cardinality of q we all know the 
is the elf node here so what is that this is elf node which is a countable so which of the following is a countable first is the correct answer so it may have more than one correct option look at the second option f is a mapping from the natural numbers to the 0 comma 1 so what is the cardinality of this 2 cardinality of this is elf node which is nothing but my c which is a uncountable so the second option is cancel out look at the third option which is given to you the set of all the integer value function third option set of all the integer value sequence set of all the integer value sequence with only finitely many non zero terms what are the non zero terms say y1 y2 say yn and the other terms are 0 0 0 fine so now you can see here it has uh, countable numbers fine since it is a unique number so it has a countable fine so the total set is my count so this is also correct option look at the fourth option because these are countable it's a unique number so it's a countable set of all the integer value sequence which converges to the one fine so what is the meaning of that what is the right hand side is whatever the sequence you have taken it's always converges to the one so what is that it's a countable also this n belongs to the natural number so it is my elf node cardinality of this is my here which is also the countable hence it is my countable so the right answer is my a c and d are my correct answers okay look at this another one a positive is the maximum of a comma 0 a negative is the maximum of minus a comma 0 xn is a sequence of the real numbers which of the following statement are true or false convergence convergence and here very simple firstly we all know how you can write the maximum of a comma b this is a plus b over 2 plus a minus b over 2 this is the way you can write as this so based on this i can define the x and positive x and positive means maximum of x n and 0 so a what is the x and positive maximum x n 0 so what is that a is my x n so this is my x n over 2 plus x n over 2 similarly what is the x n negative x n negative is maximum of minus x n comma 0 so what is that this is minus x n by 2 and minus mode is also positive fine now look at the first option x n converges if x n converges so let's say it is my l what is that l is my unique and finite fine so we all know if x n converges to the l what is the meaning of that it also converges to the l fine now if i substitute this value in here what is the x n positive so it is l over 2 plus l over 2 it converges to the l x n negative it converges to the 0 you can see both are my unique numbers and finite fine so it means this is convergent and this is convergent is my correct state fine second method for the same part so if x n is convergent we all know the convergent i can write written here the convergent sub or you can write here every sequence what is the meaning of that if sequence is convergent then its subsequence is also convergent fine so we all know because x n positive is the maximum of a comma b there is a restriction on that so this is my subsequence this is my subsequence so if x n is convergent then the subsequence is also convergent is the direct result so this is the correct answer again you can see if x n is convergent then the subsequence is also convergent but is convergent to the same limit that we will check so now what is that for this this b part x n converges to the 0 what is the meaning of that 
accent convert mode of accent is convergent zero so if i substitute here what is the value of the x n positive it converts to the zero x n negative is also convergent to the zero so this is also the right fine now look at this third option if x n converges and x n negative convergent but they are convergent to the same limit it is not given so let's say x n convergent to the l x n negative convergent to the m so which is unique and finite fine student now your target is to find check whether x n is convergent or not i can substitute this value here so l is x n over 2 more x n over 2 and m is minus x n over 2 and x n over 2 can you find the value of the x n if i subtract them it will be my here so take the limit as n approaches infinity so you can see x n converges to the l minus m so clearly says l is my finite m is my finite so the difference is my finite l is my unique m is my unique so the difference is also unique so therefore x n is also the converge fine remember we all know if x n convergent then mode of x n is also convert but converse is not true we all know look at this example what is the mode of this is always a plus 1 is a convergent unique but this is not a convergent okay now look at this last example now it means the right answer is this option may or may not be false true so x n square whenever there is a square i can think about this sequence okay so you can see 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 and then so on or you can start with the x is n is here so first value is my minus 1 So what is the x n square? It is always one 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 one. So what is the meaning of that? X n square convergent to the one. This satisfied. Now whether x n positive convergent or so look at that x n positive is maximum of x n comma zero. So when I take the first value, answer is zero. When I take this number, is a one. Then again zero one and so on. You can see limit is it limit unique? no limit is not unique it means xn positive is not convergent similarly xn negative is not convergent so this option is cancel out right options are a b and c are my correct answers so that's a very simple you just read the statement very carefully and remember the concept behind this question is my here so i hope you can simply remember all these shortcut tricks explain in this video we will see the next lecture of 51 to 55 you can simply scan and join my whatsapp group for the more questions and the discussion parts i hope you can like you can share and comments on my videos best of luck students happy learning